What up, everybody? It's April Dawn. I'm here. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. I'm doing my queen sugar. This is season two, episode nine and ten, or ten and eleven. Child, I don't know. It'll right be in the right description box. You know, they just came back. I got to get my bearings together. But I took detailed notes, honey, so I can give you the best, most thorough review that I can do. So let's go ahead and get started. Just a quick recap from last season or before the mid-season break. Micah told his dad about what happened to him in the, with the police officer. Darla and Ralph Angel are getting married. He proposed to her with no lights. Y'all remember that? Farley and Remy gonna try. She was crying and begging Remy to try with her. Well, I ain't like that. We're back. Ralph Angel and Darla are, you know, out. They're just talking about their impending nuptials. They're in the city. You can tell they're in the French Quarter. So he's asking her, like, did she miss living in the city? We find out. Because we've already found out that she used to be in college. I don't know if he met her when she was in college or whatever. But And he asked her, does he does she wish that she did things differently? And she says, yes. She wished she had finished school. But, you know, everything, but it's not him. Because you know Ralph Angel is real sensitive, y'all, but we're going to get into that one. It's not about you. It's nothing against you. I just wish, you know, I had did some different things in my life. I mean, hell, the girl was on dope. I mean, don't you think she maybe thinks she would have done something else with her life other than get on dope and have a baby with a nigga who still and raw? I'm just saying. I don't know. That's not my dream life. He said, when you know, you know, it's all good. And they kissed and it's it's real cute. I was like, oh, you know what? It took me a long time. But I like Darla. And I like her for Ralph Angel because she actually, you know, makes him more mature. and makes him step up to the plate. It makes him be the man that he say he want to be. You know what I'm saying? At least with her in their relationship. So I appreciate Darla. Charlie gets a text from Vi and the divorce is on the news. So she turns to the news and honey Gail is reporting on the divorce. The whole story is out. So maybe they let go of the storyline with the whole Porter and her releasing the story to him. I don't know what happened to that one. They just can that. It's on the news now. Either way, everybody knows. So Remy comes over and, you know, he kind of knows what's going on. And he basically says, you know what? Let's go out. Let's go out today. We're going on a date. So they go on down to the French Quarter. Because he said the world, yeah, she says the world knows how. And he was like, he said something about hollering. And she was like, you going to make me holler? I said, hey. Remy and Charlie. Okay, I almost got my praise back from Remy and Charlie. Nova and Dr. Dubois. They're together, and he buys her like a crystal, you know, as like a little gift. And she said she really likes it. That seemed like some stuff she likes. She be looking in the crystals and whatnot, like Taryn, like Taryn guy. Y'all follow Taryn guy, and she be reading the crystals, child. That's cute. He asked her about the editor. Did he like her story? And she said, yeah, you know, he liked her story about the Zilka virus. So if Nova has been writing articles about how the Zilka virus is affecting the community in the Ninth Ward, I think, in New Orleans. We'll talk about that more later, okay? She thanks him for all the patience and time that he has spent, you know, in research, helping her do her thing. And they kiss. So they, like, really connected at this point. I think Nova's probably gonna fuck it up. Vi is getting her hair done, and when she's getting her hair done, the hairdresser says, Hey, girl, look like your hair falling out at the top. What y'all ain't gonna do? What you what? You will not kill on Vi. I am starting a letter writing campaign to Oprah right now to let her know. Girl, I will come up to Hall Post Studios, whatever you, wherever y'all film in Louisiana, purchase filming. Baby, I will come down there because what you not going to do is kill my Auntie Vi. That's what the hell you ain't going to do. Vi hair is falling out. Homegirl says, she says, well, you know, it's just stress. It's just the wigs. You know, maybe I just need to let my hair breathe or whatever, whatever. We know that's some BS. We're probably going to find out later what's going on with that whole situation. Remy and Charlie, they on their date. They walking around the French Quarter. They're laughing. They're joking in the rain. Remy and Charlie, they just having a good time. It's so cute. They was feeding each other's shit. It was cute. Okay, can I get somebody to feed me some? I'm just saying, I want to walk in the French Quarter. It up. She said she liked me out with him in public. And they just kiss each other. And it's so cute, y'all. The mama was so beautiful. But the devil is busy. Charlie gets a phone call. This phone call is from her mother. She said, hey, mama. I said, oh, my goodness. On the phone, yeah, uh-huh. Okay, so, um, yeah. Okay, so we can arrange a time. You know, that's great. Um, oh, 
Oh, oh my goodness. Okay, well, uh, guess I'll see you later. Mama in town. We gonna get to meet mama. Didn't I tell y'all before the break we was gonna get to meet Charlie mama? We already knew she was the white woman. I mean, I put that two and two together a long time ago. We see her going into the restaurant. I love the way they, like, have the focus and stuff. Like, they shoot the show because, you know, they try to make you think it's the black couple that she's going to. And they, because they're in focus. And then they take the focus off and they put it on her mom, which is the white woman. Hey, that white woman look good, though. That's a good-looking white woman. She's a pretty lady. Okay, and she do look Southern, like she could really be from Louisiana. Um, it was just something about her. She looked young. Her mama looked good. Now, her mama immediately goes into this tirade about her, you know, not being there for the funeral and not being there to talk to her daughter after Ernest died. Y'all, it was straight BS. I was like, your mama is really... Your mama ain't shit. Well, you know, I was on the boat and, you know, I just felt like I needed time and space to think about it because, you know, his death hit me harder than I thought it would. Really? So your mama ain't shit. Michael arrived. They do the grandparent thing. Nova meets with Chantal. Chantal is back. So Nova meets with Chantal and she's talking about, you know, the article. Chantal says, Nova, you know, I don't even know what you believe in anymore. People are freaking out. You know, people want to come into the town and help. So basically what this article is doing, fear mongering, or it's like you're trying to scare people. This girl, Chantal, works for the health department or the health whatever, the health collective. Isn't that said what she worked for? The health collective. And she says that, yeah, the ninth ward does have a lot of Zilka cases, but it's but it's from outside transfers. It's not anything inside the community. So the article is basically saying that once somebody gets it in the community, that is going to be an outbreak epidemic of the Zilka virus. Antal is saying rightfully so that that's scaring people from coming into the neighborhood. It's scaring people from helping. It's scaring people from doing shit. Okay, it's like you're trying to get these white people scared. Nova and them are actually, I ain't going to say they're trying to make the white people scared, but they're trying to make them move. They're trying to make them do something because they want people to donate money towards the cause. She leaves. And Nova talks to Dwight and basically says, I think maybe my judgment may be clouded by you and what's going on and your agenda or whatever. And he says, it may be, but you know, I don't want you to give up on me. Don't lose sight of the goal because of me. You know, don't lose sight of that. I like him. I'm not going to lie. I like him. He's super intense. And I can understand how somebody like Nova would maybe, you know, be like, I don't know, nigga, like, this is a lot, like, because if you're going to do it, bitch, you're going to do it. He ain't playing no games. He know exactly what we want. And as much as women complain about finding a man who know exactly what they want and y'all click like this, she, she got that with him. But I think she's going to be scared to fully embrace that or whatever. I will be a little bit too because I'm a free spirit and he coming on strong. But they really do like each other, so... You know, it's cute. I like it. I'm here for it. Hollywood and his co-worker talk about working offshore. They just putting stuff on the truck and, you know, just having conversations. Hollywood is running a crew for whatever job he's supposed to be doing, and he's doing such a good job. So the boss pull up, you know, to introduce him to his friend, Sam Landry. So Sam Landry giving him the side eye and looking at him crazy. So we know that's going to come up later on down the line. The boss is raving about how good of a job that Hollywood is doing. The conversation with the co-worker, he told the boy, said, well, what made you get fired? You know, why you got laid off from your rig? And he said, I didn't get laid off. I broke the contract. And the dude was like, oh, okay, well, it must be nice. I was like, oh, you got to hate him. Okay, you got to hate it in your midst. Or somebody that's going to try to rob him or do something to Hollywood. I already know because the white boy done put together that Hollywood got a little piece of change because he had enough money to break that contract and it wasn't hurting him. Then later on, I ain't going to lie, I thought he was going to lose his job before the end of the episode, but he didn't. He actually, the, the foreman came around and told everybody that he got the money to hire him full time permanently. And so the white boy was like, yeah, you know, yeah, of course I want to have a job permanently. And he asked Hollywood and Hollywood was like, I don't know, give me some time to think about it. White boy was looking at him funny too, like, oh, nigga, you need time to think about it? Oh, you don't even need this money like this? You don't even need this money, nigga? But I don't think that Hollywood is dumb. I think that Hollywood is a pretty smart person. So I don't think it's going to go too long before he catch on to what the deal is. Because And that's why people, sometimes you just got to shut up. Don't say what you have. Don't talk about your personal life and your finances. I would have said, yeah, man, you know I got laid off because I missed my girl. I was just ready to come home. Or something like that. And stop telling people your business. Because when you start telling people your business, honey, they be plotting against you. Ralph Angel and Darla are home with Blue. And Blue begins to ask about his grandparents. Ask about my truth. Mama Truth. Like, I just love their mama name. Like, Mama Truth. That's just such... Uh, mama True, excuse me. It's not Mama Truth. It's Mama True. A Grandma True. I live for that name. Like, I might even date my daughter True. Then he's asking about his grandparents on Darla's side. And so Darla gets uncomfortable with the conversation. She knows that she's not talking to her parents. Probably because she's a drug addict. 
They deflect the story by, and by telling Blue that they're getting married. Blue is happy. He's overjoyed, y'all. And it just brought, just, just made me so happy that this little boy was so happy his parents are getting together forever. Like forever, ever? Forever, ever? Forever? It was real cute. You no, know, Darla didn't have to explain that she ain't shit. She was a drug addict. And you know, when she was home, her mom and daddy didn't want to talk to her. It could be another reason, though. It could be something else that we don't know about. You know, it didn't necessarily have to do with her drug addiction. It could be something else. Nova's in her house mixing up love potion number nine. And Dr. Dubois comes out and he tells her that she's going to an event that, sh or that she's going to an event that Chantal has organized so she can better talk to the people, you know, connect with the community and whatnot. And he's like, well, you know, does she have an agenda? I mean, like, you don't think she has an agenda? It was like, I ain't got time for this. I think that he knows that her and Chantal had a little bumpy coochie thing going on i couldn't tell somebody tell me what you think did you think he was actually being jealous or do you think he was talking about her agenda as trying to make nova look crazy at the meeting or advertising her or whatever at the meeting i couldn't tell what his sentiment was but it was obvious that nova thought it was because you know they had bump cootie cats back in the day ralph angel and blue come over and they're looking for pictures of their grandmother so you know nova and the mom look just like everybody said when he gets over there and they shows in the picture blue says the same thing she looks just like nova it's so cute her and ralph angel this is the first time that we've seen them together and you know the last time they was together they were screaming hollering and cussing each other out and talking to each other like saying stuff that you just not supposed to say to your brother's sister like you ain't supposed to say that like you you're just not supposed to do that he tells her blue spills the tea and says that him and darla are getting married Nova is happy about it she gives him a hug she tells him she loves him and she's happy for him and her so they they buried the hatchet and let it go her family and you're gonna have to deal with each other because when your mom and daddy gone who else gonna be there nobody but your brothers and sisters so you might as well just go and get over it sometimes like i said me and my sister don't even say i'm sorry we just be like hey girl or we'll just start talking to each other just like <laughs> nothing happened <laughs> we'll just start talking to each other we might need therapy for that later on i'm saying but you know right now it's working for us Charlie gives mom the tour of her home and mom has epic shade to pass out for all the time she has missed honey. Mama, if you don't stop, stop it mama. You was not here. You did not call. You did not check on me. You did not do anything. The first thing you do when you come down here is criticize. I was like, I'm not here for mama with that. I'm not here for mama with that. But she says her apartment is very industrial. I mean, you know, it just looks, you know, it's a homie. You know, it's homie. And she says, well, you know, you need to, you know, pay attention to what, how you live in because you are competing with Davis. Charlie says, I'm not competing with Davis. She says, yes, you are. You don't even know it, but you are, girl. You are. Think about Micah and where he will be happy. And she says, Micah is happy. What are you talking about? He likes it here. You know, he likes the apartment. She liked the apartment. Mama said, you're as beautiful. You're wearing your hair different. I don't know how I felt about that. I felt a little way about that. It looked good both ways, girl. Just give me a compliment both ways. That whole, you know, I like your hair. That was low-key. That was a little shade, honey. That was a light shade. I like your hair like this. I mean, it's just the clothes and, you know, the hair and, you know, the way you're living. It's just, I just need a minute to just get myself together. And, you know, at least let me try to fix it up. Charlie tells her, Mom, everything that I have done and every step that I have made is my choice. And her mom says she understands, you know, that after the divorce, you want something for yourself. You want something of your own. I've never seen you this happy before. Just let me fix up the apartment. So, Vi is signing paperwork to own the high yellow. And um, she starts having a little dizzy spell, y'all. And I'm not here for that shit. Okay, I do not want Auntie Vi to die. Y'all will not. Okay, I'm not going to do it again. Finally, I think she owns the 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 um the high yellow i think she owns it now i'm not exactly sure if that's what was happening but i think that's what was happening because he was like you brought this place back for nothing i'm not exactly sure micah and davis are spending time together davis give him a little history lesson about dred scott case and how he was trying to win his freedom in the court of law it ain't work but that's what he was trying to do he was trying to you know challenge america on their principles that they say they you know have but that ain't work but that's what he did davis tells micah that he needs to tell Charlie what happened to him with the police officer Micah does not want to do it and he's and then he goes into this tirade complaining about his mom about his mom he said he's supposed to be there to stand by him or she'll be there to stand by him and, and Micah basically throw his mama under the bus like he fucked over Charlie she didn't stand by you she left you when times got hard and you know she dragged me out here and dragged me out of school and I thought Micah liked it there but 
he did get uprooted from his life and all of that. And so David did the honorable thing for once, child. And he said, your mama did stand by me. But I put her through some shit that I ain't gonna talk to you about right now. She stood by me as long as she could. And you know, your mom is the person who deals with the hard stuff. She knows what it's like to be a parent in the good times and in the rough times. Michael, look, I know you think that it's cool over here because I got lots of money. It's a big spacious apartment. It's very nice. You know, I'm here to, to buy you cars and do nice things for you. But when shit get rough, when stuff get hard, you know, your mom is the one who's dealing with that. I'm not there to, I'm not there dealing with that. She's doing all of that. When he was running up and down the basketball court, your mom is the one that's going to the, the parent conference. She's dealing with when you get in trouble, when you do something you're not supposed to do when you grind it so you see her as oh she's being mean or oh she making me do this or she forced me but really she dealing with the circumstances that come while your dad is out playing basketball and screwing hoes i still don't want davis to have no happiness yet but he all right you know he being a good daddy he all right i guess he all right got micah together a little bit and i, I was appreciative for davis for that charlie is showing mom around the mill she's showing her how it looks everything was going on and mama start going in on her once again girl talking about well what happened to you was managing the clients i mean what happened girl like you was running his whole career endorsement deals what are you doing well if you haven't noticed girl i'm not married to davis no more and she was like yeah but anybody will be proud of you to have you as their client as a man and she was like i'm a black woman in the basketball world and i just divorced my number one client charlie has the battle of the white woman and the black woman inside of her at all times and i know that got to be rough because her mama is one thing about white people i'm gonna give y'all props for for what you do because you always believe that you can win her mom is on this well bitch if you ain't got no clients you know, go get some clients, girl. Handle your business. Do what you need to do. The other job is a better fit. And But her mom doesn't understand what Charlie understands, that some things ain't about a better fit or, or being, you know, innovative or being, having initiative and all that type of stuff. Some people don't care about that. They care about the fact that you're black. They care about the stupidest thing, like the color of your skin. They won't even give you a chance. They don't care. And that's something that her mama, which is strange because she grew up in the same place they did, she doesn't understand that. You know, being a white woman, I know you've been in the closed room with white people where they talk about black people. Like, let's not, let's be real, let's just be honest. You acting like your daughter is, you know what I'm saying, out of her mind for knowing that people don't want to deal with her and that she has another setback. And I don't even know if Charlie really, really wanted to do that or she was just doing it because she was married to Davis. Maybe she wants to strike out and do some shit on her own and do something different. So Remy is upstairs. Mama says she's satisfied. If Charlie happy, she happy, although it's not the job that, you know, she want her to have. But she's forging her own way and making her own business. So mama, she feel like she's satisfied with that. Charlie introduces Remy. You know he up in the rafters and he come down. He the community liaison. And mama say, oh, okay. How you doing? What's your name? How you doing? I said, your mama is not flirting with Remy. Honey, she took Remy under the arm and said, we need to get to know each other. I said, well, well, damn. And Charlie was a little jealous. It was cute. She was a little jealous, y'all. That was all we saw. She just walked away with him. Nova gets backlash at this meeting she's going to. Now, I didn't see this whole scene, so I know I probably missed something at the beginning, but basically, she's at this community meeting, and a woman stands up in the audience and is like, look, girl, this article you wrote, you got people thinking that we down here with the Ebola virus, child. Like, you doing the most. You scaring people come out the neighborhood like, girl, what is you trying to say, girl? What is you doing? Well, Nova's a little taken aback because she didn't expect this much hostility we come back to charlie she pissed she talking to remy about everything that's going on with her mom and she's upset with it and she just going off and off and off you my mom just come down here she do that da, da, da. calls her in the middle of her talking and he tells her that they need to talk so dr dubois is i didn't know he was a medical doctor y'all i didn't actually know that he was a medical doctor i thought he just had a phd but he's a medical doctor so he's like a pediatrician maybe they said that and i just didn't know that but he's um, seeing patients. I don't know if it's at the same community event, but he's seeing patients and he sees a little boy and the mom is worried about letting him play or, you know, doing something about going into the standing water. Maybe she needed to get something. I'm not exactly sure. I think it was just letting him play because there's standing water outside and X, Y, Z. Dr. Dubois says... It's cool, you know, just put on some repellent, go outside and play. Nothing, you know, there's no risk of him getting Zilka virus like this. So it was a cute scene because, you know, Dubois and Nova got a little bit closer in the scene. She saw what he does and she saw him kind of quell the fears of the people in the neighborhood. But it was also illuminating. So it's like, like Chantel said, why are y'all writing all this if there's no epidemic? I know there could be, but there isn't. 
You know what I'm saying? So I ain't, mm, I don't know. Buying Hollywood at home and Ralph Angel and Darla come over and they just smiling and cheesing, honey. And they give them the news about them getting married. And at first they made it seem like Vi was not going to be happy with it because she was like, you know, that's forever, right? You know, marriage is forever. She comes down off of the ladder. She says she loves him. She gives them a hug. It was so nice, okay? They going all in. He said they betting on themselves. And she tells Darla to call her Auntie Vi. And I said, that is a beautiful thing. They have come a long way because Aunt Vi ain't fooled with Darla. You hear me? She ain't fooled with Darla. And now they all family. That's real cute. I was like, I'm happy for them. Charlie has gotten a story from Micah and Davis, and she's pissed. She says they need to fight. Micah says he doesn't want all that. He don't want no publicity. He probably don't want people all in his business knowing what happened to him. She apologizes, and you can tell she's just so frustrated and so upset with everything that has happened and she really don't know what to do. The doctor calls Nova, tells Nova that he has secured a seven-figure donation from Timothy North. If you remember Timothy North, that's dude at the party that was the asshole for, for their research. I don't know. I mean, mm, I don't know. So we're going to see. Oh, Holly's talking about the best. Hollywood is talking about the bachelor party and Nova comes over and makes a joke. It was a really cute moment. I really liked that. Remy and Charlie talked to each other and she just said her and her mother do not mix. It's like water and oil and vinegar or something like that. They do not play. They do not mix with each other. Or she don't even know why her mama came in town because apparently she agreed to not come back into town a really long time ago. What's that tea? I want to know. So Vi throws an engagement party for Ralph Angel and Darla. At this party, Hollywood and Vi talk. He asks her repeatedly, are you okay? Are you okay? He can tell something is not right with her. She says she's okay and he tells her that he has decided to take the full-time job because it's going to help him better take care of her. Vi needs to stop hiding what's going on with her ass. Oh, I don't have time for you to be halfway dead, child, before the season is over with, but she ain't told nobody nothing. Not, black people, we got to do better. We're going to the doctor and telling people about our health. So Charlie tells Nova about Micah and what happened. So she was upset. You know, Nova was like, what's popping, girl? What's tea? Like, I know you got what's going on. I see you looking like this. What's going on? She tells Nova, I mean, she tells Nova about what happened to Micah. And, they, you know, because Nova was like, hey, listen. Step into my office. I hope they jack that officer ass up. I hope they M up. I kind of don't because I know that Michael don't want his business in the street. So, you know. Mm. Ralph Angel thanks everyone at the party. Um, And Darla is in the back room. She calls her parents. And she tells them that she's clean. She tells them about Blue being six years old. She tells them that she's getting married. She tells them that she loves them. It was really sad. Like I said... I can tell that Darla came from a family that has money. She came from a family that high, maybe demanding mother. Um, but she called them and like, I really feel bad for her because it's like when you do something like that, you know, when you lose the trust in a relationship with your family, like it's hard to gain that back. I mean, for you to lose the relationship with your mom, it had to be jacked up from the beginning or, you know, you have to do something jacked up. To not, you know, or your mom or whatever, to not, for y'all not to have a relationship. So it's, it's sad. That was sad to me. So Charlie is at home and she's crying to her mom about Micah. She says she didn't protect them like her mom protected her when she sent her to boarding school. And her mom says, I sent you to boarding school because you're a black woman in a white man's world. And I want, you need to be equipped with the best pedigree possible so you can make your place in the world. Charlie says, yes, but it didn't work. And her mom says, that's why I sent you down here for the summer, because I wanted you to have an identity. I wanted you to know where you came from. Charlie says she felt the opposite at home. She felt like her life was managed, and she felt like she put her life on like a coat, you know, for a few days out of the year. Mom says, what do you mean? And she was like, you just can't understand. And her mom was like, I can't understand because I'm white. And yes, girl, you can't understand because you're white, girl. It's just, that, it's just that simple. Her mama was hurt, but... Just like Elania be saying, y'all, the parents do the best they can. I can't really be mad at her mama for sending her to boys' school, making sure she had a high pedigree. Pedigree, you think about the time that her and Ernest probably got together. She was pregnant from a black man. You have a black baby. Even though your baby is white or half white, the baby look black, people going to think it's black. The perception of you is that you have a black child. So you're trying to set her up for the best life possible. And I can't really get mad at her mama for that. She only working with the tools that she had. And I can't get mad at Charlie because as much as her mama love her, she will never know what it's like to be a black woman. She will never know what it's like to be inserted into a world that she don't know. 
anything about that she doesn't you know what i'm saying that she's not really a part of or being stuck in between two different worlds she said she did the best she could and michael is strong he's strong just like she is and she cries on her mom's shoulder like as much as shade as her mama throw like her mom to me is not unlike most people mama it's just that she got a little white woman sprinkled on the top so it's a little bit different culturally but basically your mama comes to your house she talk about how dirty your house is she, you know, talk about the way you dress and the way you live and she talk about you. But when you need her, she's there for you. Like her mom is still a mom. They still have love for each other, which I really liked because that's how real life is. It's not a soap opera. Like you might get into it with your mama. or Y'all might not get along. You might see things differently, but she, at the end of the day, she's still your mama. And when she go to the left, to the left, okay, you need to call, you're going to call your mama. You're going to call the person that bore you into this world you know what i'm saying so she cried on her mama's shoulders and i was 100 percent here for it her mama was there to support her and i thought that was beautiful we end the episode with vi being in the doctor's office sitting there with her little paper roll bone i love how queen sugar takes simplicity and makes it so deep and a part of that i think is because of the female directors you know no shade to my men folks but you know i think it's part of the woman's sensibility because they take something so simple as sitting in your paper paper gown in the doctor's office waiting for the doctor to come do a test or tell you what's wrong with you, right? I'm sure as a woman, all of us have had that experience when you go to the OBGYN, when you go to the I mean, hell, everybody. You know, I've had that experience when you go to the doctor, something's wrong with you, you don't know. So now we on episode 10, 11, whatever episode it is. We are with Vi and Ralph Angel. Vi and Ralph Angel, they're talking about the marriage that's gonna happen. You know, just a little small talk. And she gives him a flyer for marriage counseling. And so he, she says, you know, people People just begin married, you know, maybe to help you out. And he takes the flyer and he leaves. She's standing in the diner and a man comes into the diner. He basically is like, I heard you had the best pies in town. They start talking. Somebody, Jared, and he worked for such and such grocery store. And they want to offer her a deal to sell her pies exclusively in their stores. 350 pies every week. And he gives her the paperwork, baby. And the advance is $50,000. I said, wait a minute. Bye, bye to come up. She's moving on up. Woo! To the side. That's why we got to find out what's going on with your health, girl, and get you on some medication. I missed, like, the beginning of the episode, so somebody tell me if they know what's wrong with Vi, and I just don't know what's wrong with Vi, because I don't know. I'm going to have to go back and watch it, and I, I be taking too long to do the review, so I didn't want to go back and waste no time. Tell me if we already know what's wrong with Vi. But anywho, she need to get her shit together, because now she got some money coming in, and she's going to have to make these damn pies. Child. Ralph Angel steps out, and he surveys the land. First, the farmer sows his seed. Then he stands and takes his seat, stomps his foot and claps his hands and turns around to view the land. That in class all the time. He's surveying the land and his crop. He thanks his daddy. Thank you, daddy. Thank you, daddy. He be still be sounding like a slave, a long lost slave. Charlie's mama comes to the house. She had a cute pillow. So that throw pillow was probably about $30, $40. Child, that was a cute old throw pillow. Charlie's thinking about the father's will and... Her mom tell her don't dwell on it. And she's just like, why did he do it? Why did he do that? Why didn't he talk to me? And her mom is just like, you have the meal now. You know, it's yours and it's yours alone. But my business plan is tied to the farm. Her mom was like, girl, don't worry about that. I got that. Give me a few hours. I'm going to hook your business plan up. I thought it was her mama was just going to give her some money. But no, her mama actually, I don't know what she does for a living. But apparently she's pretty business savvy because she was in Charlie Business, honey. Looking through the, the bills and you know, trying to push it together and figure out how you're going to make some more money and expand your business without the farm. You know, your major source of income or your major, you know, part of your business plan. She talking to her friend with the babies, the one that had the little twins. And so they setting up for this event that's going on outside. And Dubois meets her, meets the friend and quotes the story from when they met each other and everything. Child, like I said, he's intense. Don't play with this nigga feeling because he low-key might be crazy, girl, if you play with his feelings because he that type of man. He strike me as that type of man. You memorize the stories about when I met my best friend and stuff. But let me stop, okay? Because she in love. She happy. Let me not be a hater. She, you know, the doctor met the friend. The friend is like, hey, bitch, I like him, okay? He walks away. She was like, girl, look, just let the man be the man, child. Just just chill, no, but like, just let him be him. Relax. Enjoy the day. 
Enjoy it, girl. Stop trying to make a problem. We ain't no problems. I told you that before the break. And he does gloat a little bit about her, about her getting the Timothy North donation. It's different ways to do what you're trying to do because they had so many supplies and extra things at the event because of that donation money. Darla is trying on her wedding dress and Charlie is there. She likes the, char the wedding dress. She asked Charlie about it and Charlie was like, listen, I'm an honest person. Like, I can't help it. It's a part of my DNA. And then she goes into this whole diatribe about her mom. I'd have been like, bitch, this is about me. This is not about you. No, they connected. It was cute. First dress she tried on, she fell in love with. When she was getting married, her mama told her, no, don't get it. It was horrible because it made her look pregnant. Now, we discovered that Charlie was pregnant with Micah when she married Davis. But she says that her and Davis was in love. They was going to get married anyway. Mama was not happy about that whole situation. You know, she was not happy that her black daughter was pregnant before she got married. She was pregnant with a black daughter. The whole point of this story was to tell Darla that if you look bad in the dress, girl, I would have told you already. You look beautiful. Darla is pregnant. That's what people are saying, that Darla is pregnant. I mean, I didn't exactly get that from her little speech, but maybe, you know, she just know. Like, girl, I know you're pregnant. Girl, I can see it. I don't know. I don't know. You let me know what you think. They connected on that note where she says, you know, my mom was just like your mom. And, you know, I always try to make her happy. And when I called, I called her the other day, and I think that was the part of me still trying to make her happy. I just don't want her being embarrassed about her daughter. Charlie says, the girl, no matter, let me tell you something. No matter what happens, if you never talk to your mom and daddy again, just know that you have a family. You have people surrounded by people who love you and care about you. Girl, we are your family. You remember that. Because there's a whole lot of people out here, mom and daddy, who ain't shit. The closest people to them that took care of them are not related to them at all. So Nova are bae and working hard at the event and Micah and Kiki show up. Kiki has never met Noah. I didn't realize that. So it was like a little cute, that little meeting, because she was a little starstruck. You know, Kiki was starstruck. You know, Kiki usually got a little a neck roll for you, but she was a little starstruck meeting over. She told her she was the inspiration. That was really cute to me. So Ralph Angel meets Starla at the trailer. So Darla moving out the trailer, y'all. You know, she taking her last little look. You know, this is why I used to be a hoe right here. She finds uh, the premarital counseling flyer balled up like he was going to throw it away in the car. And, you know, she talks about how they're going to the house. It's her house now. And, you know, she wants to straighten things up a little bit or change things around. And it's like a clean slate. She tells them that maybe they should go to the counseling because, you know, they could learn things about each other. And the counseling is good to go. You know Ralph Angel. He's resistant to every damn thing. He says, hell no, he ain't going to no damn counseling. He don't want to go to no counseling. This is going to be an issue for them down the line. So Vi goes to see Charlie and runs into Charlie's mother. This is... A epic showdown. When I say epic, I mean epic. Bi stepped in that building like damn chancellor. Okay, like she was finna let her ass have it, honey. Like she was Vicky Newman and it was about to go down. She stepped in the room and they start going back like, bitch, I told you, you were never supposed to come back here. We had an agreement. She said she's not here to hurt Nova. Nova's gonna be hurt twice. She lost her daddy and now she lost in the time before when you stole him. I said, her, and the mama apologized and you know, they go back and forth or whatever because the mama's like, bitch, you could have flew them people wherever you wanted to see them you could have flew them you ain't supposed to be here you done did this to my family and you know the mama says she's sorry and by leaves but what i want to know be is that woman must got some kryptonite in her cool to cat because ernest must have lost his damn mind behind this woman if you told this woman she can't never come back into the town no more child what the fuck what did ernest do child ernest must have lost his mind behind this girl he must have lost his whole ass mind so if y'all don't know what's going on with the family nova is the oldest Charlie is the middle child. Ralph Angel is the youngest child. Now we know the story. Ernest was with mama. Him and mama never got married. Okay. They had Nova. They still never got married. During some time during this period, he stepped out. He went on and had Charlie. After he had Charlie, him and the mama eventually got back together. And they did not get married until she was pregnant with Ralph Angel. That came out in the argument before the mid-season finale. So now we know the whole story. So apparently... Whatever happened between them was so much of a tizzy that she left town and they had an agreement that she would never come back to town. Now, what I want to know is, why you agreeing never to come back to town, girl? Like, are you from that town too, mama? And um, and Nova and Ernest was not married. Yeah, they had a baby together and yeah, they was in a relationship. But hell, there ain't nothing you gonna run me out of town for because I slept with your boyfriend. Yeah, it's messed up. But it ain't nothing nobody gonna run me out of town for. So I got to know. I want to know what's the old tea. I want to know. Hopefully they're gonna tell us what happened with it. So Charlie attends this sugar 
Farm Sugar Association Society meeting and basically Sam Landry had faked her out. He told her that the meeting was an hour later than it actually was. So when she arrived at the meeting, everybody thought she was late, number one. And he said, why well, send an email? She said, well, you know, I didn't get the email and I was on all the other emails. She looked bad in front of the other people. He tries to introduce her and they already side eyeing her, number one, because she black, number two, because she was late. Okay, and then she sits down and they start talking about who they're going to nominate for the sugar queen because they already took care of the business part when she wasn't there. She says, well, what about Kiki? Because Kiki's picture is in a stack of pictures and the lady next to her was like um girl you just need to be quiet no she's not suitable she's not going to be our sugar queen she's not um you know what we looking for you're new here so maybe you should just be quiet and just watch and at that moment see that's why i can't be in that type of situation because i would have turned around and be like you tried it, okay? Who are you talking to, girl? And I know right then on the inside of Charlie, that in a black woman, that in a white woman, them hoes were fighting, okay? Because that white woman was like, who are you talking to, honey? I know you're not talking to me like this. And that in a black woman was like, you tried it. How you talking to me reckless? Not, you know what I'm saying? And so I know they was battling with each other because she bit the shit out of her tongue. You hear me? She bit her tongue. She was pissed. But I ain't tripping because one thing Charlie don't like nobody to do is tell her ass what to do. She gonna come back with paperwork, receipts, all type of stuff. Because Charlie don't play them type of games. So I already know that she about to come with it. It's something that's going to happen. So Mike and Kiki are at the house, honey. He said they all alone. He said, bounce chicka wow wow. David said a turn wow. He, you know, they got the whole house to themselves. But Kiki turns around and busts his bubble real quick. And I was like, that's right, sis. Get him on together, girl. Don't you be letting these little boys take your booty. He tells him that she's a virgin. She's not going to have sex until she's in love. And you know, that's it. You know, that's that's her that's her standard. So, you know, if he gonna be with her, he gonna have to deal with the fact that she's not finna have sex. It ain't going down. What I like about Micah is that he quickly corrected himself. Like, Micah is a nice young man, y'all. He is a nice boy. He corrected himself. He said, you know what? You're right. I don't want you to feel pressure. I didn't even ask you if you want to come over here. Do you want to do something else? So she said, no, I want to spend time with you. I, You know, I like spending time with you. So... They spend time together. It was real cute. It was real cute. Nova talks to Bay, and Bay tells her she offers some type of taping on some show. I didn't hear what the show was. Is it a TV show? Is it a radio show? Somebody let me know. But she says she down with the plan. Darla runs into an old John at the gas station. She's there with Ralph Angel. She's coming out the gas station. The dude was like, Star, Star, I know that ass anywhere, Star. You free right now? I got some time. She he says something to her and she says something and you know she gets in the car Ralph Angel saw the whole thing happen and he's like who is that who is that and she says you know it's nobody she's like crying you know he get in the car we can tell that Ralph Angel is disturbed now y'all know Ralph Angel insecure as hell so you know this is gonna be a problem we go back to Vi she's checking out the paperwork for that deal she's been offered and her vision is blurry, y'all. So I'm thinking, like, I ain't gonna lie. Like I said, if y'all know, already know what's wrong, I just hope this shit ain't no damn brain cancer because, you know, you start tumor be sitting on your part of, you know, your brain. You can't see. We just gonna pray. Keep by lifted. Keep her lifted. Mama comes home and Charlie is uh, doing the Olivia Pope. At this point, I was thinking, where the hell is Remy? Ain't y'all supposed to be trying to work on a relationship? Like, why is Remy never around when she really needs to talk to somebody or when she really going through some shit? Like, he ain't around. I don't know if I like that, but she at home drinking her red wine and eating her popcorn like Olivia. Mama comes home and she says, this is what you need to do for your business plan. You need to expand your business. I noticed that you're only dealing with black farmers. Why? And because the white farmers didn't want to deal with me, of course I tried to work with them, but they didn't want to deal with me. They didn't want to work with nobody who looked like me. It's a history thing. It just is the way it is. Her mama said, listen, if that's the way it is, you need to work to change things. Because green is the only color, you know, that people work with. So you need to basically come up with the game plan. What you going to do? Because you shouldn't be playing by nobody else's rules. I ain't raised my child to be no bitch. Okay, so what is you going to do, girl? You going to reach across the color divide? Her mom is not discovering. Just like at that meeting, they don't give a damn how much money, money Charlie got. When she was up in that meeting, she might have as well been a dusty-ass black woman. That's how they was looking at her. Like an old dusty black woman. Y'all saw the maid. You saw the um assistant. I mean... They just treat them like they wasn't even there, honey. So they didn't care about nothing about that. But I do feel the mama. You can't be defeated. You got to come up with some kind of way to get around this, to innovate, to, you know, expand your business. What she said, it makes perfect sense. If she can get some of the white farmers to work with her. So Vi stops by. She talks to Vi about what happened. It's interesting to me how Charlie does not 
confided in her mother about the black white things. Last episode, you know, she said, you can't really understand because you're not a black woman. So she vented to Vi. She let Vi know everything that was going on, how she felt when she was in that meeting, like going off, like you would be with your friend, like, bitch, I can't believe they did this. And you know this, she said this, and this is what happened. X, Y, and Z, and Vi gives her some good advice. Just like she always does. Girl, get it together. You know what I'm saying? Like, you going to figure out what you need to do. Like, I love, I just love her. God, I love her so much. So, Micah and Kiki spend a little time together. Girl, he want to braid her hair. Braid my hair out in the hood. Feeling good. He was trying to braid her hair in that little raggedy ass braid, but it was cute. Did he cry? Because it, it seemed like, you know. She said something to him, or they when they grabbed hands, he like turned his face and a little tear head came out. I was like, Michael, let me find out you crying. Let me find out you in love. Let me find out. Nova is talking to Dewan. They're really sharing things with each other. And she says, you know, she feels as if she failed her mother. You know, she feels as if she failed Micah because she's always about helping people and doing stuff for people. But she can't really do anything for Micah. And you think about that for Ralph. Ain't you too home? Brother that she ain't going to see in, in jail. Okay. And so then he talks about how his parents think that, you know, his if having a family is a man's purpose. And, you know, he should be raising a family. But he just feels like his life is, um, you know, has a higher purpose than just having a family. And so they basically said at the same time, like on some soulmate, star-crossed lovers that shit, and then they started kissing the girl, and then we seen all the, all the chocolate. Ow, ow, ow. I was about to have a diabetic stroke. You understand me? It was some chocolate going on up in there, honey, and I was here for it. One thing I love about this damn show is the way they be lighting the black people, child, because them people look so pretty and shiny child and they just look glistening girl they just was oh it was just oh honey it was everything now one thing about nova she gonna whether she going through good times bad times she gonna get her some she's always getting her some and i ain't mad at her nova get you some doll is trying to get blue ready to bed and you know he won't go she can tell that i mean you know you can tell that she's still getting a little frustrated you know right before that point you'd be like go to sleep but he won't go to sleep he jumping around, he full of energy. So Ralph Angel comes in and they sit down and, you know, they read him a story or whatever until he's go to sleep. So they make shadow puppets. It was real cute. Ralph Angel is vexed, y'all. Like the whole time, you can tell, like, he's really, you know, really putting together that he finna marry a hoe. She had a past. You know, you know she was on that stuff. You know it. So now he's, he's reconciling everything that's happened. But his problem is that he don't know how to communicate. They need to go to the counseling, like she said. Ralph Angel at a non-communicating ass is up all night, y'all. Vexed, tossing and turning in the damn bed. I mean, can't go to sleep. Child, he is so insecure. It is so aggravating. I told y'all that for the mid-season finale, he always needs to be affirmed. He needs to be affirmed all the time. He needs to know that he the man all the time. Like, that shit is aggravating. As a woman, that is hard to do. Like, why are you so insecure all the time? Like, you know this. This ain't nothing new to you. Why are you acting brand new? She gets up and she's like, this is my first night here. And the first night I get here, you're acting like you don't want nothing to do with it. He says he can't think of nothing else but that dude they saw at the gas station. That's all he could think about, him talking to her crazy. And she says, I know it. I knew, I knew you was judging me. I felt the judgment as soon as it happened he asked her if it's the old john she doesn't want to talk about it she basically says i don't want to talk about star i'm trying to bury that bitch okay like i'm done with it and she says you throwing that in my face every time we get into an argument you can't throw that in my face or whatever because he basically was like girl you was horned to make money to, to get drugs and she said nigga you was stealing people credit cards okay stealing credit cards and what else he said robbing people and stealing credit cards and he was like, I was, that's different because I was doing that to feed blue. You was being selfish. You wanted drugs for yourself. And see, don't get me wrong, it is an element of selfishness to it, but a drug addict has a disease. That's a disease. It's something that they, I won't say they can't control it, but their body needs it. They feed on it. So it makes them do things that they wouldn't normally do, you know, in their normal life. It turns them into another person. Darla is very hurt. And you know, this is that one point he can hit her on all the time. And he always throwing that in her face, throwing it in her face, throwing it in her face. And that is not going to work. She said, listen, is this how our marriage going to be? Are you going to throw this in my face every time we get in an argument? He said, I'm not throwing it in your face, but it is what it is. And she said, I'm not that person anymore why don't you just let me be me do me and live the life that i'm living now and stop holding what i did in the past against me she said if you can't get your shit
shit together. I'm not going to marry you if I got to deal with this, okay? So she said, I'm going to sleep on the couch. So she put him in, he put his ass up on notice. And I was not mad about that because rap angel do be acting childish. Don't get me wrong. I understand that it's a lot to deal with knowing that you're dealing with somebody who was a prostitute at one, to at one time supporting this drug habit. But at the same time, you the one who asked this girl to marry you. Ain't nobody told your ass to ask Donna to marry you. You did that on your own, sir. So now you should have thought about all of that before you decided to make a rash decision and marry this person. Y'all live in a small ass town. You think you wasn't ever gonna run into nobody that screwed her? Oh, Micah and Charlie talk. Just touch bases about Davis and he tells her that he saw Nova and she kind of treads lightly a little bit because she don't know if Nova said anything about what she knows, but pretty much she figures out that he didn't say anything and then he starts going on and on about Kiki and how she's so amazing and says she applies every year for the queen, the court or whatever this court they're trying to be on as like a form of resistance because she knows they're never going to pick her because she black. She like, you know, Charlie is like, wait a minute, you, you screwing? Nah, we taking it real slow. There ain't nothing you got to worry about. He's really falling for her, and it is so cute to me. Okay, it is so cute to me. Charlie sat her ass back and said, This down, that's my bitch. Charlie said, Queen Sugar's gonna host their own harvest festival this year for the black community. We're gonna stop letting you make the rules on what is acceptable and what is not acceptable, on what is beautiful and what is not beautiful, because we're gonna do our own. We're gonna have our own, okay? And it's gonna be litty. And you're gonna be mad. You're gonna stay mad. This is gonna have a lot of issues going up to it, because you know Sam Lansbury and the crew gonna give her a whole bunch of stress about it. We just gonna pray for the event and everything go smoothly. So Bay is leaving Nova. She's really sad about it, but you know she loves Bay. And they said they gonna, you know, get together. He gotta go to a conference. And, like, it was so grown. Like, I was just here for it. It was grown. But, baby, he said, when you leave, you know, when you come to Atlanta, you just let yourself in, child. He gave her the keys. I said, major key alert! Major key alert! Major key alert! Major key alert! Got the keys, the keys, the keys. She got the keys, the keys, the keys. She got the keys. She I don't know if Nova wants the keys because her face was like, yeah, oh, shit. Like, it's for real. Like, this is really about to go down. Like, I didn't know. That's it, guys. That was the first two episodes of Queen Sugar back after I missed season finale. I know this is a long-ass video. I might break it up because this video is over an hour. This is ridiculous. This is a long-ass video. So, uh, I don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. If I left anything out, because I be missed the very beginning of this epic episode. So, if I missed something, just let me know down in the comments. I hope y'all having a blessed week and continue to have when I'm really, really tired. It's late at night. I haven't even ate dinner and snacks like a nice. Peace out, y'all. Have a good one.